Hello, everyone. Welcome to IFFR Afterthoughts. Um, we hope you enjoyed uh, the film uh, Aurora. Aurora is the third feature film of uh, Costa Rican director uh, Paz Fabrega. And we are very happy and honored to have uh, Paz here today with us to talk about the film. So thank you very much, uh, Paz. Uh, welcome again. Welcome again to Rotterdam Film Festival. Thank you so much. It's, um, it's nice to have at least this kind of uh, interaction, you know, even if yeah, of course, this is, I guess, better than nothing. I, I said thank you again because uh, Paz is not new at all to IFR. Paz was here in Rotterdam 11 years ago in 2010 uh, with her first feature film, uh, Agua Fria de Mar, uh, which was in the Tiger competition and she won the Tiger Award. Uh, well, Paz, it's been 11 years since then, uh, now in very different circumstances. How has life been for you? And, and, and yeah, how maybe you can let us know a little bit how you feel that your uh, career as a filmmaker has uh, developed uh, since then? And, and how does it feel to be back at IFFR? It's that's that's an interesting question. Well, it's been it's been uh, a a crazy time really um i sort of for the for the um, up until the time i was at uh rotterdam with agua fria de mar i was like very concentrated on that one project as it usually happens no like trying to get that first feature film made you just kind of from the time i graduated film school that's all i was i was doing and i think after that i sort of felt i needed to find a way to make films that i could be also like living a life that felt more i don't know in in touch with other things so so i went and made a film with with friends very quickly after rotterdam and and that film took me like a very long time to make because it was it was a little bit like um a lot of questions i had about filmmaking and the and the way i wanted to build stories and the way i wanted to work with actors so it took me a long time but it was like a like a school you know to I guess to learn about about myself and sort of my my way of approaching characters and places and um, and also crew and production and, and everything. So that film took like a very yeah a very long time to edit. And then after that, I I also I had I had kids, so that <laughs> that also is kind of like another big question when you're a filmmaker because it's it's almost impossible, like there are parts of filmmaking that are very difficult, especially with, with small kids, you know? So, so that was also kind of very difficult when my, my first um, baby was born. It was like a time when I felt like I couldn't write anything. I couldn't, just because there, there was like no time at all left for to sit down, to concentrate, to be on my own. And, and this third film sort of came out of, of that because I think it was, in a way it was like what I'd been wanting, no, to be sort of thrown into life and away from film, come back to film. So uh, it was while, while he was still a baby, I sort of started getting up like at four in the morning and sort of like writing down a lot of thoughts that I had about about motherhood and about the decision to well more about parenthood i think but um yeah the decision to to have kids or not or and how that is um yeah just how you go into that and and that's how this film came about yes so so let's focus focus a little bit on on the story of of the film um i was telling you before that um uh, it, it's more complex than it looks like. It, it has uh, several different layers. So, so hopefully we can elaborate on, on that during this interview. Uh, maybe you can start telling us where the whole idea comes from and how was the process of making this film? Well, initially it was, um, it's interesting because the, the little girl from Agua Fria de Mar, Montserrat, the actress, she, I found out halfway through my pregnancy that she was pregnant at the same time as I was and she was 18 and I was 38 and uh, we sort of I mean we we've been in touch for this whole time but 
um, I sort of felt like like my like a lot of her issues around being I don't know I, I felt like I could really identify with her and I sort of started having this idea that like you can you, I don't know they sort of tell you like at 18 you're not ready but there will come a time when you're ready and I sort of felt like like I wasn't I wasn't even if I was like as old as you can you know be pretty much I, I felt like this is something that you're never really going to to feel any other way than like like you're just totally unprepared and it's a mess and what are you going to do and um and so I started working with her and I started like just taking my camera and filming her a little bit and writing stuff and I wrote three little stories that I wanted to shoot with her but then it got so it it just got complicated with like um, both her pregnancies and births and small babies and everything. And I never managed to to shoot that film, but I would have very much liked to shoot it. That was more more documentary than than this film I ended up making. But then the, the third of those stories was basically Aurora, which was the idea that um, a woman who, who can't have kids... Um, sort of like approaches a girl that shouldn't be having a kid, you know, that is supposed to not be prepared and approaches her sort of like offering to, you know, offering up this idea of adoption that maybe the girl hadn't thought of as a, as a possibility for her. And when, when I couldn't shoot this with Monse, I sort of started writing more around that story. Um, a friend of mine sort of, I mean, at the time I was like very lost. I just, you know, like I, I kept bringing up this project and then I just left it for a few months because I was like too tired and wasn't sleeping well and all this stuff with, with a newborn. And um, I was like very frustrated with that. So a friend of mine sort of picked it up and said like, listen, let me help you. Let's like work around this story. Um, and, and that's how how the story came about. And I think, as I was telling you, the um, I sort of let the, um, the script just go wherever it wanted and sort of didn't commit to anything at any point. So I worked in a, in a, in a strange way. I mean, it, it was like I, I wrote something that I knew wasn't going to be the final film, but it was like, this is this is something, you know, that, that I can show sort of like sent to funding and sent to producers and sort of give them an idea. But I was always very clear that this isn't going, this isn't going to be what I'm going to use when I'm shooting. This is like to give you an idea. And the reason I wanted to do that is that I felt in a process like I had with Agua Fria de Mar, that I spoke so much about what I wanted to do. And then when I was up against it shooting, I was like very frustrated that some things some things you can catch in film and some things you can't. And sometimes in your head, you have things that, that don't show up when you when you have a camera. Well, at least that, that happens a lot to me. So um, having spoken so much about certain ideas made me like really fall in love with them. And then when I was shooting, I, I wasn't like picking up the stuff that was there. I was like, you know, in my head all the time. And this time I sort of wanted to have like a, like a more humble approach, like, like saying these are several things that interest me and and this is what I'm looking for and I'm going to try to to keep more connected to what is there and what is inside me and and sort of like let that flow a lot more so um in the end there are so many things about about something like this no about um wanting to have kids or not that um yeah, there, there were like lots of different things that are maybe sometimes in the details, like what's really going on in the film is more like in something small that is just like uh, showing something as it really is rather than like a big sort of dilemma or and and at other times, yeah, it's like things uh, appear to be a certain way, like what you're saying appear to be quite simple, but underneath there's there's a lot more happening. Yeah, it, it looks to me like a very calm film, very tender. There's a lot of tenderness, um, um, dignity in this film. 
but it also has like this underground layer, uh, which is a little bit maybe more, I don't want to say dark, but, yeah. uh, because it's not dark, but, but but then you have, for example, there's a lot of lying in the film. They, 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 they lie a lot. They say a lot of lies. <laughs> so so there's there's this um, very, uh, so on the one hand, we have a, an unwanted pregnancy. And I have to say that I really like your approach to this unwanted pregnancy. We are used to see in films uh, like with unwanted pregnancies is, oh, big drama, lots of crying, what I'm going to do now. No, here is very calm. Everything is like, of course, when the mother realizes, but but it's, yeah, I mean, that, that's normal. We can agree on that. Uh, that's on the one uh, hand. On the other hand, we have the, the very special relation between Luisa and Juliana. And, and, and this is where there are like uh, underground um, yeah. things like, like lies and not, not everything is, is transparent. Not everything is, is very clear, right? Well, I think what I think what happens to the characters is that they can't bring themselves to admit what they want because it doesn't seem to exist in the real world. So I think ultimately, I think what the film is saying is that Luisa wants to be a mother and she doesn't. And Juliana wants to be a mother and she doesn't. And this is something that I think we all need to talk about more, <laughs> know that um, that that the kind of the kind of care and the kind of connection that comes with parenthood is something that 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 isn't all or nothing. It can't be. Like we're we're always told it's like it is all or nothing. You know, it's like kids are raised by their parents and it's a connection that exists between children and parents and and in some cultures not even parents, just the mother, you know? And it's like this this thing that is everything and you have to be everything to this other person um but if you choose not to be a mother it's something you're going to miss out on there's no way you can experience it if you don't give birth or if you don't you know and i kind of feel it's this is like a modern invention you know and it's like and it is holding women down and here is something that that i don't know if it's in the film but it's something i feel i think it's holding women down because it's like for a time of your life, you're so um, consumed with this decision because it's such a big decision to go up against. And and then if you have kids, you're consumed by the kids. If you don't have kids, you're consumed by some question about whether you would have wanted to have them or not. And in 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 time, it hasn't been like this. You know, it's like kids are taken care of by a lot of people, and you can have you can have this kind of connection and this kind of care even if you don't give birth, even if you're not a mother. And I think the film is sort of talking about how this sort of naturally happens between two people because they have this secret between them. You no, know? because nobody else knows. So while nobody else knows, they sort of like naturally flow into this thing where it's like they're probably both going to be taking care of this kid and there's but at the same time neither one of them is ready to sort of go into a process of like adoption and who is going to be responsible and and all this but but at one point it's like it feels like he's just going to carry on living there and like this is what would happen if there was like no outside structure sort of saying this this shouldn't be um, but of course, they, they both have a foot in reality. And I think this is why what is actually happening is never said out loud, because it's something that could never happen. No? Yeah, absolutely. And uh, I would like to remark um, the, the, the work you, you made you, with, with the actresses. I mean, I, I would like to, 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 to remark how great uh, all of them are, but especially the two main characters, uh, Luisa and Juliana. So, uh, yeah, I would like to ask you um, how was to work with them, um, if you had them already in mind when you were writing the, the, the script or if um, they came in later through a casting process. And also in this process of rewriting the, the script, uh, if, if you let them kind of improvise or, or if they gave you input. Uh, so if you can elaborate a little bit more on that. Well, uh, when when um, 
I was doing this other film with with the girl from Agua Fria de Mar. I met uh, Raquel, the actress that is Juliana. And so she was, and, and this was by chance. It was like a friend of a friend's and I met her and we talked a little bit while she was still pregnant. And she was very much on my mind when I was writing the script. And then the character of Luisa, I, I found through a casting process, but we had like a very long casting process where I met women of all different ages. I went by like very strange sort of um, ways of finding them. Like at first I wanted to find a musician. So I looked at, you know, I, I spoke with a bunch of women. There, neither one of them is, is an actress, like a professional actress. Um, and through meeting all these people, I think I, I sort of, yeah, I, I wrote scenes and I, I had new ideas. Um, and then when I found, when I found Rebecca, uh, who is Luisa, she, she had like all these things going on in, in her life at the time. She was kind of like coming to the moment where she realized she didn't want to have kids, but this was kind of like such like an absolute decision. It was like very, very strange for her. And we spoke about this a lot and, um, and yeah, and I think the, the reason I wanted to do it this way is that there are like, I have like questions. I don't have so much like, like answers. So I guess what I like doing is with the people that I'm making the film with is like to, to keep asking, you know, to, to ask and to bring forth like different ideas. And, and this is how I, how I worked with them. And they improvised a lot. And we had like a lot of time of, of just, and, Something that I think was was maybe like the, the most important thing for me about making this film or like the most powerful was that I think some things, you know, you know, this this technique psychodrama that they, I don't know if, if it's called like that in English, psycho, psychodrama, but it's like this this technique that you use where like if you've been through something where you 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 still have like um, troubling thoughts around it you can sort of play it out and you can do what you wish you had done so like if you did never said goodbye to your mother before she died you can like play it out with another person and and something happens and it's like it's um and I felt like when we were actually shooting the film this happened especially for Raquel that she had had a teenage pregnancy that was like very difficult for her. There had been many things she hadn't been able to talk about. She had been very lonely. And of course, in the story, it was very different. She wasn't lonely. She had this group of friends. They, they had like a, I mean, there were moments where she was lonely, but I, I felt like there were many times where she wasn't in the character. She was like going back to what had happened to her. And it was like very, beautiful to watch and very and very kind of I don't know almost like healing in a way because she she was like living something again but in a in like with with like more love or like different kind of um support and and I felt like like it it did something to her and to me and to the ones that were involved and it was like I don't know I hope some of that is comes through in, when you watch it. I think it absolutely comes through when you watch it. Yeah, I think it's very well accomplished. And I, I can imagine that the shooting was like a, it, it must have been a very special experience for you all guys. Uh, it's, it's, well, it's beautiful to hear what you just said. Uh, we are um, out of time now, Paz. So, well, um, I, I just, yeah, I would like to know much more, but well, let's uh, <laughs> let's wrap it up. And uh, well, thank you very much. And and well, welcome back again to IFFR. Uh, I wish you the best luck with this film and hope to see you soon in person. Thank you. See you soon. Bye. Bye bye.